it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for November 2018 and before we jump in Leo I just want to let you know the new blog is up and I'm so excited about it click in the description box down below you can access the blog or you can just hop over to stormygrace.com and check it out I have got the um, major astrological transits and aspects that are happening in November December January I'm working on February and the rest of 2019 so because anybody got time to be in a hundred hour video talking about every little aspect that's happening but that is your space and your place to be able to check it out and I even give you a little tidbit as to how to get it done looking at your own charts so check it out and enjoy okay all right, Leo, so this month we've got a lot of movement going on. We've got things changing directions. We've got things changing signs. So there is movement happening. And one of the biggest movements we've got going on that I am absolutely excited about is we've got the North Node of Destiny moving out of your sign where it's been for about 18 months and it's moving into the sign of Cancer. Now, why I get so excited about this is because wherever the North Node of Destiny goes, you will fulfill whatever that destiny is. I mean, you look back 18 months later and you're like, oh my gosh, I did a thing. A thing happened. Like you will take the actions you will. With some of the other transiting energies, I love them as well, but they are ways that things can happen for you. They are ways that change can be brought about, not a will. You know, so I get very excited about the impact of the North Node of Destiny. So for you, it's going to be moving in the sign of Cancer into your 12th house space. So what does this mean? What does this look like? First of all, there will be a separate North Node of Destiny in Cancer video. So please keep your eyes out for that. And I'll also be breaking it down by the houses. But for the most part, let's have a little chit chat about that right now. In the 12th house space, what you're gonna do is clean house, right? You've got this theme this month, a little bit of cleaning house. You've got some moon energy as well that'll help you clean house. But clean house, you're letting go of some things. This is an energy of transition. This is the time of a spiritual awakening for you, right? Where you have these moments where it's like, oh, I get it, I can hear it, I see, I feel, I believe, right? It is a very nice, subtly, huge energy that will be happening for you. So some things that have been looking to get out of your spiritual space and some light that has been looking to expand within you as well is gonna be happening. And I know, oh my gosh, if you do anything in metaphysics or energy or anything like that, it's like, oh, love yourself, transform yourself. Those things are great and we gotta do those things. But the North Node of Destiny has a bigger purpose. There's something that's got to close and end for you or you've got to transition to and it's going to take a lot of light to get you there. So I look forward to seeing what that is, okay? All right, let's jump in and let's break this month down before I just make this the North Node rest video. <laughs> okay, so that North Node of Destiny is going to move into Cancer right there on the 6th. As well on the 6th, we have got Uranus who's already retrograde but he's gone back on up into the sign of Aries. Okay, so you've already had this. Think back over the last seven years because that's how long it takes Uranus to operate. In Aries, he was working on your identity already and this is your identity in the public, right? This is the ninth house that's been working on for you. Publishing, broadcasting, broadcasting yourself out into the world, letting people know your name, putting that book out there, education, religious ideas and spiritual belief. Your faith has likely been, you've had to relook at who am I in my faith, right? What do I believe? believe, right? These kinds of things. Now, things that have to do with foreign language, foreign people, international business, these kinds of things have all taken a shift and it's been so much around your identity, your beliefs. Who are you? What is your you in it? Now, with um, Uranus retrograde here, what we're going to do is look back over the last seven years. What are the habits you still need to shake over this last few months until March to get rid of this stuff? What's your hold back, right? Because whatever the hold back has been here or whatever your traditional structure is here, Uranus is going to come back in here and say, nope, get rid of that. Get rid of that wall. That wall is not the right wall for us, right? So it's going to come back. It shows you the progress that you've made, but it also shows you, let's focus right here and make this the very best. Let's make it our best life, right? Okay, so think about that. Look over the last seven years and what are the adjustments that still kind of need to be made right here or you're feeling intuitively called to adjust as well. 
Now on the 7th, we've got a new moon happening in Scorpio, and here we go, lighting up the fourth house space, right? With the new moon, we plant these seeds of intention because anything's possible. Anything's possible. This is a fresh start. The sun and the moon are together. In Scorpio, this is intense energy, right? This is intense. It's intimate. It's a deep connection. It is not a shallow connection at all. So in the fourth house space with the new moon, yeah, of course you could be moving, changing where you live, changing something about where you live. There could be the change of relationships in your house because it's so intimately connection, connection, connected, right? Now, the other thing that I think of when we are in Scorpio territory, we want the truth, right? Like I want the truth, the nitty gritty down where the roots are. So are there things that you need fresh start around old hurts? Right? Could that be a thing that's happening for you? Do you need a fresh start um, in your relationships with your children? Do you need a fresh start with your mentality around your childhood or around your foundations, right? This is just a place to have this desire strong enough with a moon strong enough to get to the truth and take some action here. It's absolutely gorgeous. So whatever you start here, I'm really looking forward to hearing about. Now on the 8th, we've got Jupiter entering into Sagittarius. After 13 months of Scorpio, he's coming home to Sagittarius. He's comfortable, he's feeling good, and it is lighting up your fifth house. And wherever Jupiter goes, he wants you to get bigger. He says, okay, I need you to expand. I want you to grow here. I want you to bring some wisdom to the table, right? And so the deal is, is how do we acquire wisdom? Usually by doing it wrong, okay? <laughs> So in your fifth house space, while Jupiter wants to expand you here, you're going to bring some wisdom to the table. You're going to learn some lessons in this fifth house as well, and they don't have to be terrible. These are the ones that are usually kind of great, okay? So in the fifth house, we've got new beginnings. That's the very first thing that I think of in the fifth house is joy and new beginnings. We've got the new business here. We've got conception. Conception means conception of ideas, conception of people. Maybe you got a baby on the way. Maybe your baby's having a baby, right? Are we ready to welcome some grandchildren? Are you adopting? Is that something on your heart right now, right? The new beginnings are happening, but also expression. Leo, you have seriously had so much moon eclipse energy, energy, energy happening on your you slash relationship accesses that I know you have transformed. You've got a voice and we need to hear it. We need to see it. We need to be a part of it. Not to mention Uranus is over here saying, re-look at your identity outside of yourself. Who are you showing up as, right? Are you letting us hear your story? Because if you're not, turn that camera on. I need to hear from you, right? Are you sharing your voice um, internationally? Right? So these are all the spaces of expression from this fifth house. True love. You could have romance come into your life this year. Let me tell you, Jupiter is not particularly interested in romance. He doesn't really care, honestly. But he'll bring it into your life, and then you have to use some wisdom and figure out what to do with that. Okay. Now, if you do happen to have portfolios and things like that, this is also an opportunity to expand that portfolio. Take some risks. Look at that. Okay. On the 15th, we've got Mars entering into Pisces. Mars is not comfortable in Pisces, okay? Here's the thing. When a planet shows up in a specific sign, it has to get on board, right? It's going to have to act like who that sign is. And Mars wants to run and he wants to do things fast and furious and let's go, let's get it done. And Pisces is like, I'm cool because it's water. So he's over there trying to sprint in water and Pisces won't have it. She's not going to let Mars speed her up, right? So this is a slower, more passive energy energy of Mars and sometimes a little bit frustrating. In the sign of Pisces, it's in your eighth house. This is the place of joint connection, so joint finances, sex, intimacy, metaphysical things, counseling, anything where we're looking for the truth and it's got to exist in the truth for us to intimately exist. What can happen here with Mars is, first of all, it slows us down. Do you need to slow down and take a look at these things? Mars is still an energetic action. Even if he's slowed down, you could be having joint resources come together in your life. Maybe you are on YouTube and you land a brand deal or a sponsorship or a collaboration or your partner starts making more money, right? Maybe your sex life, you have to slow down and look at that. Where Where is it so delicious? Where is it not so delicious? Things to consider, right? But this can definitely definitely have an impact there. What it can also have an impact on for the next few weeks is maybe you're not exactly sure what you want in this area. Sometimes when high energetic force meets water, it can be a little blurry. 
You maybe don't know what you want yet, but if you slow down enough, you can gather some details. So going forward, you can make a decision that feels right for you, or you can sit with the decision and see where it aligns, okay? All right, on the 16th, we've got a bunch happening. First of all, Venus is coming out of retrograde. Holler. Okay, <laughs> and it's coming out of retrograde in the sign of Libra, so partnerships in your third house. So you're going to be probably easier to negotiate with, more willing to compromise on some things. It will soften your conversation, your decision making, your thinking in regards to relationships and things like that. It could also bring back maybe a sale or something that you needed to finish up or a conversation that needed to be had. These could definitely rise back to the surface. Remember, even though Venus is coming out of retrograde she's still got that shadow energy with her so this could certainly still be bringing up the last vestiges of that but then what's great about it is because it's going to be direct energy you'll get to take action and move some of those things forward so it's a great energy for moving conversation and decision making forward which is interesting because mercury is also going retrograde on the exact same day and that is our communication and decision making planet it's going retrograde in sagittarius in your fifth house so that fifth house is busy this month okay so with mercury in retrograde first of all remember nobody's exempt from a mercury retrograde everybody's experiencing it everybody will be facing backwards so have some grace with each other try and be a little bit extra kind but in this fifth house space I think it's gorgeous Jupiter comes here and says let's expand this fifth house and mercury says yes but let me look around first what, how, what do I need to clean up or make some different decisions on so that I know where to take us? What's the action plan? Well, I can't know if I don't know what I'm working with, right? So Mercury adds this beautiful retrograde energy of going back over what's there first before we run out and try and expand ourselves, right? So I think this is gorgeous. So Mercury retrograde in the fifth house, past romance could come back. Absolutely. Mercury retrograde, things with your children, conversations with your children. Maybe your child is having to learn that lesson over and over again. If they are anything like me, they are hard-headed. Okay? <laughs> so there could definitely be things happening there. The other thing I keep thinking of is because Mercury is so savvy and observant, you could be going back to your joy, Leo. You've spent a lot of time re-looking at that identity in so many different ways over this last two years. Are you ready to express that? I keep saying in this video, where's your voice? Where's your voice right now? Are you sharing it with us? Because this could be your leap moving forward, even though it's looking backwards. Okay, on the 22nd, then we have the sun come into this fifth house, so you're definitely looking at the fifth house this month. On the 23rd, we've got a full moon happening in Gemini. The full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. There's going to be shift here. And this is in your 11th house, okay? So with friendships, we could be re-looking over friendships, re-looking over long-range um, goals and desires, right? Or they could be coming to an end, or kind of a head comes on it, or you see that space of a fresh start here. I would wouldn't be surprised if some associations or friendships or social connections didn't need to end or be adjusted and here's the thing I keep asking you where your voice is where are you in the social sphere if you have a gift a vision a whatever it is and you're here listening to an astrology video so somewhere in your intuition you've got something to share socially where is it Where's the adjustment? Where can you acknowledge that you need some practice in this 11th house so that you can move some things out? I think it's a wonderful energy. I also think it's very nice with Gemini. You could have a chatty new friend come into your world, or you could start investing in listening to maybe a new teacher, mentor, or studying something. How beautiful is that? Now, as we end the month here on the 24th, we've got Neptune coming out of retrograde. And here's the thing, when Neptune is retrograde, things are not exactly clear. It's like you can see the dream, you can see the vision. It's all, yes, it's coming, like we feel it. You know, something's coming, but I can't put my finger on when and exactly what it is. But then when Neptune comes direct, the dream can be made into a concrete reality. And this is happening in that eighth house for you. So where's that joint resource that's gonna be happening, right? Where's the connection? Where's the collaboration? Where's the sex, honey, right? Like where are these things that are going to be happening? Where's the healing, the counseling, any of those things? And this is always my example with Neptune. Before a chair was a chair, it was just an imagination. So that's it. The imagination gets the opportunity to become concrete. And it really hasn't had the opportunity to completely do that since about June. So 
I think it's going to be an interesting month. I think every month is interesting because life is interesting. But Leo, you've definitely done a lot of shifting. So let's go. Let's get ready to hear your voice and see what you have got stuffed in that back little joyful pocket of yours, okay? All right, guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.